All right, this is fourth grade, module six, lesson five. And in this lesson, we're going to continue modeling uh, tenths and hundredths. But this time, we're going to be modeling it with the idea towards helping students understand the equivalence that four tenths is equal to 40 hundredths. And we're going to be doing it uh, mathematically, uh, you know, using this equivalence of fractions idea. And we're going to be using place value disks as well. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by uh, zooming in. Let's take a look at just one square. And we're going to call that square one whole unit. All right, so that's one whole unit. And uh, suppose we wanted to model uh, 0. Point, oh, let's do uh, 0. 0.2. Okay, so 0. 0.2. Now we know that 0. 0.2 is 2 tenths. So the first thing we want to do is let's model 2 tenths. So the idea is we need to cut this into 10 strips. So I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to cut this into 10 strips. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Holy moly, those don't look e equal at all. But that's, you know, that's okay. That's We're estimating here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's my 10 strips. And when we want to model two tenths, well, that's easy. We're, we're just going to take our coloring pen and we are going to shade in two of those strips. So there we go, one strip, and here's our second strip. And so I've just modeled two tenths. Now, the idea is, but what if I went the other direction and I cut the each tenth into tenth. So I'm going to cut it in half, and now I'm going to cut one, two, three, four, five, and once again, <laughs> these are just not equal at all. Man, I was trying. I was trying my best. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So now I haven't added any red. But instead of seeing two tenths, we now see twenty hundredths. So what does that say? Well, that says two tenths is equal to twenty hundredths because the same amount of red shading existed in both cases. Uh, all I did was just cut them into smaller pieces. So now two tenths is two big strips while 20 hundredths is 20 little squares, all right? Now, what we want our students to recognize is, hey, wait a second, I see a pattern. 10 times 10 is 100. 2 times 10 is 20. And the idea is uh, we want students to start to recognize this formal mathematical equivalence, that 2 tenths, when you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10, you get 20 hundredths, and 2 tenths is equal, or equivalent, to 20 hundredths. And we can reverse that procedure as well. So the, reversing the procedure, we could say, well, let's start, um, if we wanted to, we could just do this, whoa, we can look at it, we don't even need that other square. We could say, well, we know that I started off with 2 tenths, I know I, at some point I ended up with 20 hundredths, and we already know that 20 hundredths is equal to 2 tenths, so can I find a relationship starting with the 20 hundredths and going to the 2 tenths? And the idea is, yeah, we can divide both by 10. And we end up with 2 tenths, so 20 hundredths, when you divide the 20 by 10 and the 100 by 10, the numerator and the denominator are each being divided by 10, you get 2 tenths. So we can find equivalence by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 10, or we can find a relationship, by an equivalence, by dividing both the numerator and the, de the denominator by 10. And that's a really powerful technique, this multiplying and dividing idea. So here we're going to put it in practice. It says find the equivalent fraction using multiplication or division. That's what I was just talking about. And shade the area models to show that we are correct. So we're going to zoom in a little bit here. And we're going to say, well, 4 tenths. Well, 4 tenths 
Uh, if we multiply that 10 by 10, we get the 100 that they want. So 10 times 10 is 100. So that means 4 times 10 gives us 40. So we know that 4 tenths, and I'm going to write it down here, 4 tenths is equal to 40 hundredths. And that's really what it said up here. But this 10 stuff kind of I hides it a little bit. So I'm being more explicit down here. 4 tenths is equal to 40 hundredths. How do we know? Well, we're going to shade that in. So we're first we're going to shade in 4 tenths. And 4 tenths looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our 4 tenths. And now we're going to shade in 40 hundredths. So what does 40 hundredths look like? Well, 40 hundredths looks like Oops, I want that. Um, there we go. 40 hundredths looks like this. Well, that's 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths. So we can see that 4 tenths is equivalent to 40 hundredths. Now we can show that same idea only in reverse using division as our tool for. Uh, showing equivalence. <clears throat> First, we can do 60 hundredths. So what does 60 hundredths look like? Well, there's 10 hundredths, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So there is 60 hundredths. And then <clears throat> we know that if you divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10. So 100 divided by 10 gives us the 10 that we're looking for. So 60 divided by 10 gives us the answer of 6. And so we're pretty much sure that 60 hundredths is equivalent to 6 tenths. So what we're saying is here's a 60 hundredths, and we think it should be equal or equivalent to 6 tenths. Let's make sure so let's just grab another color, and oh, let's do blue. And we got, well, there's one-tenth, there's two-tenths, there's three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths, and finally six-tenths. So there, and we can see, hey, this and this, they're exact same amount of shaded in stuff. I think, I don't know if I'm allowed, am I able to? No, I can't. All right, so we can see that they are equivalent, and so there you go. That division, when you divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10, you get a new fraction, but it is equivalent to the original. So here we're going to complete the number sentences and then shade the equivalent amount on the area model here. And we are going to have to draw some horizontal lines in order to make our hundredths. And the idea is, well, 36 hundredths. We want students to recognize that that is 3 tenths plus an extra 6 hundredths. So how are we going to shade that in to our model here? Well, first thing i got to do is I've got to draw, I've got to shade in 3 tenths. Well, we know what 3 tenths is going to look like. 3 tenths is going to be 1 tenth. 2 tenths, and 3 tenths. So there is our 3 tenths. Now what is 6 hundredths going to look like? Well, 6 hundredths means i got to take this tenth right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. And we've got to chop it into 10 pieces. So I'm going to cut it right in half. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then one, two, three, four, five. So there are, I've just created hundredths. So this blue stuff right here so far is our three tenths. Now we need to put in six hundredths. And I'm going to zoom back in a little bit and I'm going to color code it. And this time I'm going to do it in red just to differentiate. I don't need to, but I want to. So there's four. Five, six. So if we want to see what 36 hundredths looks like, it's going to be three strips plus six little hundredths. So three tenths plus six little hundredths. And so that whole thing right here, this whole piece right here, is represents 
36 hundredths. So what's a decimal notation form? It's going to be 0 0.36. What's the fraction form? It's going to be 36 hundredths. And there you go. So here we've got a variety of different representations. We've got place value disks, we've got a number bond, we've got some decimals, we've got some fractions, plus we have it in unit form. So this is really giving students an opportunity to just compare a whole ton of stuff going on here. So let's just take a look at problem B, and we're going to count, and we see that they've conveniently put them in, in 10 frame form, in, in groups of 10. So we've got 10, 20, plus 4. So that's 24 hundredths. So we're going to start with 24 hundredths. And so as a number, as a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.24. And then what we want students to see is that these 10 hundredths equals 1 tenth, and these 10 hundredths equals 1 tenth. And if we wanted to write that out, 10 hundredths, we want students to understand right off the bat that that's equal to 1 tenth. So if we have 10 hundredths and another 10 hundredths, that's 2 tenths, because these 10 hundredths equals 1 tenth, these 10 hundredths equals 1 tenth. So we now have 2 tenths, plus what do we have left over? We have 4 hundredths left over. So we want to see have students connecting the decimal form with its fractions in expanded notation. So that 2 represents 2 tenths and this 4 represents 4 hundredths. And now I can go back down here and I can fill that in. Hey, that's 2 tenths plus 4 hundredths. Now parents and teachers let your students bounce around in terms of how they fill this in there is no magic order in in terms of how they fill it in in fact that's the whole point is to allow students um, what to choose whatever access point they want to use in order to develop their understanding of the other um, representations last page <clears throat> so it says uh, we've got a variety of different um, representations. So we've got fractions up here, and we're being asked to write it as a decimal and unit form. Uh, and then, in fact, that's what we're doing in all of these cases, except sometimes they give us the decimal and we have to come up with the other two. Sometimes they give us the unit form and we have to come up with the other two. Oh, so let's take a look at uh, B. So B is saying, all right, so 13 hundredths. We want students to recognize that's 0 0.13. And so we want students to recognize that that is 1 tenth and 3 hundredths. It doesn't say so, but we could, if we wanted to, we could say, hey, 0 0.13, that's 1 tenth and 3 hundredths. So if we want to zoom back out, and we could say, oh, let's take a look at D. All right, so D is saying, hmm, 90, this is 0 0.09. So this is kind of a tricky one. So parents and teachers don't overthink it, and we're not going to get into too much formalities here. So we're just going to say, hey, that's 90 hundredths. And that's, of course, the same thing as 9 tenths. So if we wanted to, we could say, hey, 90 hundredths rep is represented as 9 tenths plus 0 hundredths. And that's actually, if you think about it, that's a really cool way of helping students understand that 0 0.90 and 0 0.9 are the exact same thing. Is because we can say, hey, right here, this place value is 9 tenths, this place value is 0 hundredths, and so 0 0.90 is the same thing as 9 tenths. Point nine. That's actually kind of cool. And then the last one. Oh, let's do E. So E is saying we, we have the unit form, 6 tenths plus 3 hundredths. So 6 tenths plus 3 hundredths, we could think of that as 6 tenths plus 3 hundredths 
So what does that equal? That's 0 0.63. So as our decimal, that's 0 0.63. Not sure why they give us the 0 already. That's kind of odd. 0 0.63, and as a fraction, that's going to be 63 over 100. And that's our connections, our helping our students understand the variety of different representations that these fractions and decimals have and how to use those S, uh, representations to understand deeper uh, what place value is in terms of decimals. And that wraps up fourth grade, module six, lesson five, uh, using models to understand the equivalence of tenths and hundredths in a variety of different ways.